for. And you say, what do they mean by that? What do they mean, but what do they mean by every, everything? Everything in the store, everything you're shopping for. What does a comedian or a humorist mean by everything? Everything. Couldn't find the 18 year old boy section. <laughs> well, there you go, yeah. There you go. So if she says, if uh, she gets the answer to the question from the clerk, did you find everything you were looking for? She's like, I couldn't find the 18 year old boy section. <laughs> it's been a while. Boy toy. Boy toy. Boy toy. Yeah, boy toy. Then we heighten it up with that. I couldn't find the 18 year old boy toy section. Then, now it's exactly right, because now you're telling specifically what you want the 18 year old boy for. Because when you just say 18 year old boy, people go, mm, that's all right. <laughs> You had to process the law, 18, that's a legal way. But if we're in our heads processing, we're not laughing, right? But now we know specifically, where's the, where's the young 24-year-old boy toy section? You know, if you said that, you'd get a huge laugh, right? Because normally, that's not expected from somebody. Or if they say, see, I usually say this, I'll go through it and they'll say, did you find everything you were looking for? I said, well, I found the wine and the candles, but I couldn't find a soulmate. <laughs> I had Mahi Mahi, but I'm not in the twins. <laughs> but no, yours was really good. Very to the point. Right? Right to the point. And it was like, and then you could tag it with something, it's been a while. You know, or whatever. You're going to get another laugh because you're revealing emotion and you're tagging what you just said with something that associates it. Or uh, you can also, in almost any sentence we hear, there's a, a word there we can spin the meaning. And we did it. It was all clean, right? It wasn't dirty. We didn't go dirty. We went to, we went to love, right? And we went to love in. Yeah. <laughs> Cougar love. <Yeah>. Cougar love. <laughs> I'm still 18, I'm sorry. Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> we all are. Um, or something, yeah, I remember uh, when a um, uh, coach for the uh, Tampa Bay Broncos, having a, a Tampa Bay Buccaneers, having a horrible, horrible season, and he had to do those press conferences after every bad game. He's sitting there at the press room and had a horrible game, and the press says, uh, Coach, how do you feel about the execution of the offense? Without missing a beat, he goes, I'm all for it. <laughs> is why this coach worked forever in the NFL, and if you look him up, he did, Coach John McKay, he rarely had a season over 500. But because he had a sense of humor, they were like, let's keep him around, he's a great guy. <laughs> um, now also keep up, you know, if you say, we already said the line, the audience is in, the, in whatever state the performer is in. And if you're just talking to somebody, if you're giving a presentation and you want to tickle, you can say, you know, and if anything you take away from this, the audience is in whatever state the, the, uh, the performer is in. Switch your phone. No. It's an interesting well, ringtone. <laughs> Anybody else, uh, you like the MP3s we use as ringtones? I like that you can actually customize songs to ring for certain people in your contact list. It's like, I, have, I, I love that stuff because now it identifies and it gives me an emotion to attach to it to remind me of who they are. Uh, like when my wife calls, it's a cool song, goes, My baby don't mess around because she loves me so and that I know for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When my ex-wife calls, it starts out, let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for having that. So it got me in a nice joke. So we go left. So you can tell, like I said, you can take any logical grouping of words and make it funny. Once you understand the structures and the science behind laughter, uh, the structures of comedy, it's like the audience is in whatever state the performer is in. Look at this line. Somebody have yet? Yeah, anybody have a double entendre? What word can we modify? Come on with the second meeting on. Same. Yeah. So what would that what would that turn be? California versus Nevada or something. Yeah. So uh, you know, if you say uh, the audience is whatever the state the performer is in, I'm not talking about geography. You're going to get a tickle as you move the class along or you move the group along. So you can see you can be used use as the, my best teachers were the ones who had a great sense of humor. You know, and I learned so much from them. I remember, I, I struggled with algebra, I struggled with word problems. I had this, this teacher named Mr. White. He, he, he just was just this kind old guy, and he, he'd get up there and he'd notice when everybody was like doing this. We're lost at something. And he'd go, did I ever tell you guys the one about the two ducks? <laughs> and he'd go on this long journey about these two ducks, and we'd laugh. And ne but the next, next thing you know, 
everybody started to get the concepts. Everybody was tuned in. Everybody was, was listening and alert. So the other thing you can use after double entendre, this is one, you know the wittiest person in the room? This is the guy that gets double entendre. This is the guy that gets, I'm going to take, two different, take these words and find the alternate meaning and play that back to whoever's listening. This is the person that does this all the time, is so ready to do it. There's different ways to do it. How much time? Oh, five minutes. Five minutes? Okay, perfect. If you practice this with a, with a buddy or a friend, just almost listen to every sentence they say and ask yourself, okay, what word is the word there I can modify? I know this is my daughter sometimes. She, she loves Pokemon. And she goes, hey, she was like, Daddy, I love Pokemon. I go, I know you do. She goes, uh, my favorite is my Vivasaur. My Vivasaur is very rare. I go, wow, you know, I love Vivasaurs too. I prefer them well done. <laughs> you know, and then she'll say, you're just being silly, and I'll throw back another word play, oh, it's better than being Sally. I mean, it's dumb, but what it's doing is it's training your brain to recognize the opportunities. So the sense of humor, I call it the seventh sense, is like a muscle. You can actually take it and start to train it to recognize humorous opportunities in speeches, in conversation, in relationships, in sentences, in, in, in anything you present. You can take any logical grouping of words and make it funny. And I tell this to all my students, write that down and embody that. I can take any logical grouping of words and make it funny. That way when you're writing jokes, if you see a news story that doesn't have any funny in it, doesn't pop out at you, you don't run away from it. You just analyze it and figure it out. Because your job as a performer or as a comedian or as a humorous writer is not necessarily to find funny things. It's to take something and make it funny by putting it down on the page and making it funny. You know, there was a, I was on a podcast recently and the podcast guys were trying to sort of trap me a little bit and they said, um, so Jerry, uh, we understand we read on your website that you think you could take any logical grouping of words and make it funny. I said, I believe that inherently. I said, but rest assured there are groupings of words on my, my computer that I haven't succeeded with yet. Uh, but I'll get to that. You know, some take more time. I said, I do that so to build the confidence. And that don't run away from that line. Let's figure it out. So they, tried, they said, well, we have a grouping of words right here. We're going to just, you, so we're going to test you, okay? You mind? <laughs> I'm from Philadelphia, so I was like, okay, this goes with the territory. If I want to put myself out there like that, uh, that'll, be, that'll be able to take the heat. And they said, oh, we just read this news story. The report said that, uh, a new report that said, said that Lego has replaced for Ferrari as the world's most powerful brand. Yeah, how can you, can you make that funny? And I was like, wow, it really put me on the spot. I go, can you guys sing me the Jeopardy song? I'll see if I can solve it in that time. And so I go, oh, let's see, Lego has replaced Ferrari as the world's most powerful brand. Yeah, but try dating a supermodel after showing her your Legos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right away, you could see how what I, what I did there, what I did there is I actually made a table and I took the two dissimilar ideas. Because one definition of comedy is taking two dissimilar ideas and converging them. So I took those two dissimilar ideas and instead of just sitting there, what's funny, what's funny, what's funny, I actually made a table, Ferrari, Lego, wrote everything I can think about dealing with Ferrari or dealing with Lego. People, places, things, words, phrases, cliches, events on Ferrari, and the same thing for Lego, and the next thing you know, there was something in this column that could flip over to that column, and I was able to mash the two together. So once you do that, that's where the audience starts to laugh. Besides, with Fer Ferrari and Lego, you have recognition at play. You have incongruity at play. You have coincidence at play. Because, oh, oh, oh how, there it is, you know? And that's what, when you have three, or, three laughter triggers together, that's how it can work. Now, I just gave you guys some tidbits of what can work. I mean, there's so many different ways to approach this. And I would like to give you, like, in a PDF, all of that stuff, the 13 laughter triggers, and the, or the nine laughter triggers, and the 13 comedy structures. And uh, if you would like to receive that, just I just send it to you, so that you have it and you can look over it. With examples, uh, it's, a, it's a, I try to give, give information away so that people can have this. Um, then you text this, uh, text your email to this phone number. This is uh, not mine, this is my assistant, so <laughs> uh, you could say, um, yeah, please send me the PDF, uh, and it'll have the 12 or the 13 comedy structures and the nine laughter triggers. And you'll, you'll have that all in your email by, within 24 hours, and then you can research them and go over them. And 
you know, figure out, start to apply this and actually start to write comedy mechanically and begin to identify with it. And once you identify with it, it becomes a part of you. And then just your normal conversation becomes funnier. Then you start recognizing things in just the, the space in reality. You look at a sign that says, oh, look at that, authentic Chinese cuisine. Say out la espanol. How often can it be? I was 12 years old, I saw a sign that said, no dogs allowed except seeing eye dogs. And I said to my dad, Dad, who's, what is a seeing eye dog? And he said, that's a dog that help blind, helps blind people get around. I go, well, who's, who's the sign for? <laughs> but when you understand, then you can start to apply it, and you can actually train yourself to get funnier and funnier and funnier. Thank you very much. So the, in the raffle, there will be two of his weekend seminars, which is awesome. Wow. In the meantime, Janet wants to say thank you. Thank you very much, Jerry Corley. Let's give Jerry a big round of before, before we leave the room, are there any judges, uh, if you are...